cut the baby in half so that you may both have that baby. Now, the woman who stole the baby says, great, let's do that. The real mother of the child says, I'd rather the child live with her than be killed in that way. If it's not with me, I'm going to be heartbroken, but I'd rather the child live, even if that means with her. Solomon says, that's the mother. There comes a point where, in 2013, you know, there comes a point where you may know folks who just, they, they have all these wonderful things to give, but they don't want to give. You may be having all these gifts to give, but you don't want to give. You may want to be holding on. But this is the year where you have to learn to share and to help others out and to not think that if you hold on, you're going to be safe. Or if you hold on, you're going to be fine. This is the year where you share what you got. You invest something of yourself and you share in other people's success. And if they succeed, even in the thing that you're good at, that doesn't mean that you're going to be forgotten. That doesn't mean that you're going to go away. What it means is that you help them succeed and you will be carried with them whenever they succeed. This is the year where you realize that, that people like Harry, that mentality is a bad one to have. When you're so paranoid that you don't want others to succeed because you may think that I may be forgotten if someone else succeeds. It's a bad paranoia to have. And you see it in different places in life. You see it in high school, in a high school team, where the main star, who's a, a senior in high school, realizes that he has to help out the young freshman in the basketball team. But he knows if he helps out the young freshman, the freshman may take his spot on the team and as a starter. So what does he do? He doesn't help out the freshman, and he ends up harming the entire team. But if he helps out the young man to succeed, the team succeeds, but he runs the risk of not playing as long as he wants to play. That is that King Herod mentality. I don't know if you know it in other situations, where you know if I teach this person to cook, they may end up cooking better than me. And then other people may want to eat their food. And then they're not going to ask me to cook the meal on Thanksgiving. And then I'm not going to do the thing that I've been doing for 10 years. You know what? I'm not going to teach them how to cook. I'm going to let them buy Popeyes and say to everyone, oh, they want Popeyes this year because they can't cook. Right? But if you teach them to cook, you teach them to do something well. And you see that they actually want them to learn how to cook. And they want them to learn how to cook just like you. Because they love the way you make your turkey. They love the way you make your rice. They love the way you make whatever you make. And they want to learn how to do it just like you. Not to be better than you. Not to replace you. But because they want to feed their family good food. And your food inspires them. And if you share your recipe, you're not going to be forgotten. You're going to be remembered and living on in other places. Because there may be some other person who eats that recipe and says, this is the best turkey I've ever eaten. And you can say, well, I learned it from so-and-so. And you move on. There are folks who have so much knowledge. And it's a shame to have all this knowledge and have no one to share it with. Because you fear that other people won't say you're the smartest person in the room. It doesn't let anybody grow. Sometimes the Herod mentality is this. If I am not the captain of this ship, I am going to bring this ship down. This ship will sink before I let go of the ring. That's Herod mentality. In the extreme, Herod is an extreme case. But sometimes that creeps into our minds and we get nervous about being forgotten. We get nervous about not being remembered. We get nervous that others may not say our name anymore. And so we hold on. But in 2013, I want you to realize that the way to not be forgotten is not to hold in and to hold on to what's yours, but the way to not be forgotten is to share and to bless and to mentor and to teach and to give and to invest something of yourself. The more you do that, the more lives you will touch. The more lives you will touch, the more you will be remembered. God can use you, and sometimes God's just waiting for you to be willing to help others out so that God can truly use you and truly show you his purpose in your life. Jesus becomes king. And you want to know what 
Jesus' kingdom involved? Jesus' kingdom involved raising up 12 disciples. And when it was time for Jesus to die, you know what Jesus ends up telling his 12 disciples? He doesn't say, I want to hoard all the glory and all the power for myself. What Jesus says is, I have taught you all that you need, and I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit to remind you of all I'm teaching. I have to go away now in this form, but you will carry on my work. I need you to flourish. I need you to be blessed. I need you to carry my name in the good work that I have taught you so that I may gain glory from that. What Jesus is saying is he doesn't need to get glory just by hogging all the attention. Jesus is saying, I need you as my disciples to be just like me so that others may know who I am through your success, through your glory, through your strength, through your blessings. Jesus was the opposite of Herod. He wanted his people to thrive, to be saved, to be redeemed, to be healed, to have life and have it more abundantly because that was proof of Jesus' greatness and divinity. And so with us, the proof of our worth is not in the stuff we hoard and the stuff we keep, but the proof of our worth is in the people we bless. Bless them. Invest something of yourself. Invest something of what you have. You have a talent to share? Share it. You have knowledge to teach? Teach it. You have stuff to give? Give it. You have insight to offer? Offer it. You have experience to, to, to teach others about? Share your experience. Do you have people that you see are struggling to learn a little something and you can teach them something? Go out your way, spend a little bit of time, and teach it. And you will see that you will be blessed with them. As the proverb was said by Sister Lisa, those who refresh others will find themselves refreshed as well. Do not be like her. Do not let that fear that you will be forgotten overtake you. Realize that the best way to be remembered is to bless others to give up yourself and others, and to watch them grow and be blessed through God using you to make a difference in their lives. Amen. Amen. Amen.